Welcome back to Yoda King channel. In today's video, I'm going to be installing a pair of upper control arms by SPC, Specialty Products Company. Now, one of the main reasons why I went with SPC having a 35 inch tire, I wanted to get the most suspension travel available. SPC arms have improved clearance to get around the spring bucket and 80 degrees of articulation in its ball joint. Now equipped with free pivoting X-axis joints, SPC's arm gives you maximum droop travel. More travel than any other ball joint or motorball equipped arm on the market. I'm going to remove my sway bar mounting bolt. This would be a 14 millimeter socket. Now before I take my upper control arm machine bolt out of the way, I'm going to need to bend some metal here up in the wheel well. I'm going to grab a large pair of channel locks and start bending and that machine bolt should come right up. And next with a 12 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove my brake line. And with a 17 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove my sway bar link. Sometimes this whole stud starts to spin. If it does, in the center, there's a place where you can stick an Allen wrench. Then you'll need a speed wrench to remove that nut. Next, I'm going to remove my upper control on ball joint bolt with a 19 millimeter socket. Now, sometimes your ball joint bolt stays stuck inside your steering knuckle. Just tap it a few times, it should pop out. And then, if you got a bungee cord or something to hold your steering knuckle where it's not flopping everywhere, uh, this would be a great benefit. You know, sometimes the CV joint tends to pop out when you're doing this kind of work, and it, it, it should seat back in the saddle if you push it incorrectly. But I did it one time, and it didn't seat well, and, you know, drove off with it, and I had to replace my CV joint. It was an easy job, but pain in the rear to get everything back off again. Now I'm going to slide my bolt off uh, from my upper control arm. It's going to take a little gymnastics but it'll get out eventually I'm not going to worry about what position the start plate is going to be in right now I'm just going to make sure I show you how the washers go installed just like this Now I'm reminding myself exactly how I remove this bolt is exactly how I want to install it back in. The reason why they install it this way is that in case that bolt gets away, it doesn't slip out going downwards uh, and then you lose your upper control arm. Now I do get a new castle nut and a cotter pin with the upper control arm. I'm going to go ahead and install it, but I'm not going to tighten it up just yet. Now I'm going to remove my shocks. I'm going to eventually replace these with king shocks. Uh, but for this video, I'm just going to remove it so I can see what setting I want my upper control arms at. And I'm going to adjust it accordingly. But eventually, uh, I'm going to send it to my alignment shop and they're going to decide what's best for me. But I'm going to make it as easy as possible for them. At this time, I'm going to tighten my upper control arm and torque it to 85 pounds. Next, I'm going to install my tire. Then I'm going to set my floor jack under my lower control arm and I'm going to move it up into the wheel well to see how much adjustment I'm going to need on my lower control arm and see what position I'm going to put my ball joint at. Now I'm going to simulate how the tire would be in a wheel well like if I was going off-roading or crawling. Now with my rig on but the engine off, I'm able to turn the wheel uh, left and right and see where I'm rubbing at here. 
I'm slightly rubbing on my uh, DRT cab mount relocation kit and I'm going to go ahead and push it now to the left to see how far am I going to be rubbing on the bumper and it seems to be okay but I'm going to have to shift my lower control arms just forward a little bit. Now I don't believe my shocks are going to allow this tire to go that far up in the wheel well but just for shits and giggles I'm going to try it anyway. I believe it's going to be a lot less than that. Before adjusting my upper control arm ball joints, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just adjust the lower control arm. Now the back OE adjuster should be pushed out and the front OE adjuster is pulled in. The OE lower adjusters are far more effective at creating clearance than the upper SPC ball joint. The goal is to maximize clearance with the OE lower adjusters and compensate for the skewing of the OE adjusters with the SPC upper ball joint. Look at how close to the knuckle center the lower ball joint is compared to the upper on your Tacoma. The lower adjusters are about four times more effective at creating clearance than the uppers. There's no magic in this world and 35 inch tires are pretty big to try and fit into a taco but we can still shift things around a little. Whatever clearance you gain at the rear is lost at the front but the front stuff is easier to modify or just get a modified bumper. Now I'm usually running about a negative 5 degree of camber. The amount of camber needed is dependent on driving style and environment. My taco stays in the garage most of the time until it's time to go overlanding and then it goes into the mountains with lots of turns. A vehicle driven straight most of the time will need less negative camber. We let the tires tell us if the camber is correct. If the inner edges wear, then the camber is too negative and it needs to have a positive change. If the outer edges wear, the camber is too positive and needs a negative change. Now that said, when the OE lower adjusters are skewed, caster will increase greatly, sometimes too much. These trucks have some pretty low caster specs to begin with, so I prefer to get a little more, but not over positive 4 degrees. Over positive 5 degrees of caster and I start feeling bump steer which is something we want to avoid as it will completely wipe out the benefits of increased caster and then some. People with my setup usually end up with the SPC ball joints in the E positions because we've gained so much positive caster from the lower adjuster skewing that we need to give a little back. That's not bad as E gives just a touch more rear fender clearance. We want the OE lower adjusters to be as close to mirror images as possible and any difference in side to side should just be in the upper SPC ball joint. During this process it took two shops and three alignments to get my rig up to par with the alignment because I just kept rubbing at the rear so I decided to go straight to the source before going for the last time to the alignment shop and I just called the SPC's top technician, Tom Przepelski. I think that's how his last name is said. I don't know. I always cook his last name. And forgive me, Tom, but he told me that he set up many Tacomas, Forerunners, and FJs with the driver SPC ball joint in the position E and the passenger SPC ball joint in position D. That is preferable to the SPC ball joints being equal and the lower adjusters different. He likes to have about 0.5 degree of cross caster to compensate for road crown. Since caster pulls to the low side, they want the driver side to be 0.5 degree lower than the passenger side. They often use positive 3.5 degree left and positive 4 degree right. He adds that some technicians prefer to correct for road crown, that's okay too. Camber pulls the opposite to the high side. An example of this he told me is left camber negative 0.2 degree and right camber negative 0.5 degree. The left side is less negative than the right so it is the high side and same correction for row crown is introduced. You don't want to use much of both or you'll end up with a truck which pulls left now. On strut cars there is no way to adjust caster so all the road crown correction needs to be done with camber but Tacoma's <laughs> they can have both angles adjusted. Now in final camber and caster settings are achieved, torque top ball joint nut at 150 pounds. But I'm gonna throw this rig on a flatbed and have it wheeled to an alignment shop to have it professionally aligned. Now one of the really coolest features of this upper control arm is if a uniball goes bad, you just gotta replace that part and it's very inexpensive versus 
replacing the whole upper control arm. Now stay up to date with content by subscribing to my channel and thank you for all the comments and the likes. It does help out with the algorithms. Now it's time to get off the pavement and into the wild and up in the mountains to make memories. This is definitely the best way for me to hit the reset button, get away from the busyness of life, pack my truck, throw my dog in, start heading east up into the hills. I catch myself meditating on God's word. One of my favorites out of Habakkuk 3 verse 17 and 19. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Peace, y'all.